This is the final design presentation for the Laser Communication Boresight System, sponsored by GEOST, an optical engineering firm located in Tucson, which specializes in optical remote sensing and provides expertise on electro-optics and sensors. This system aims to be a simple, flexible, and low-cost system which can align a transmitting laser beam to a receiving telescope within 10 arc seconds of angular error. The system attaches to a standard telescope rail, allowing it to be used with a variety of receiving optics, making it useful for laser communications as well as astronomy. The system uses a detachable lateral transfer hollow retroreflector to reflect the beam into the receiving optics, which allows a single user to obtain a precise alignment in a few iterations with no complex software or devices. Despite many delays due to the current circumstances, the system was completed and met nearly all of our design goals. The system was more than capable of meeting the 10 arc second alignment error within four iterations, while maintaining repeatability and ease of use. Free space optical communication is a rapidly developing technology, which provides several benefits over traditional communication services, such as radio or fiber optic cable. It requires no frequency licensing and can transmit digital data quickly. However, it is currently limited in range and requires a time-consuming alignment process. The laser communication system consists of a TX assembly on the left, which includes a beam expander, ND filter, and collimated laser, all connected to a tip, tilt, and rotation kinematic mount. The beam is sent to the alignment system, where it passes through the lateral transfer retro reflector and on to the RX unit. The alignment assembly is connected to the system by an on-off magnetic base and is removed during laser communication. The beam then passes through the RX unit and is picked up by the microline detector. The recorded image is then processed with centroid detection software. The software output is used as feedback for the alignment process. The bulk of the mechanical design work was focused on the transmitting laser alignment stage, also referred to as TX. This subassembly is what determines the alignment capabilities of the system, so it was important to make sure that it was robust. This design was based around kinematic coupling and spring loading so the alignment stage could be as rigid and repeatable as possible. Only two axes of adjustment are required for pointing, specifically the alpha and beta adjustments as shown in this figure. Beta adjustment, as well as vertical X adjustment, is accomplished using three adjusters on top of the alignment stage. By turning all three adjusters, the height of the stage can be controlled, and by moving just the differential adjuster, the angle of plate 3 with respect to plate 2 is finely controlled. As can be seen in the section view, all adjusters are spring-loaded to interface with a carbide V-groove. Alpha adjustment is accomplished using a spring-loaded differential micrometer, which rotates the second plate about a coupling pin. This pin has a tight slip fit with the drill bushing in the plate above, resulting in smooth angular adjustment. There's a screw at the front of the alignment stage to lock this adjustment in place. The system slides onto the telescope rail and can be secured with the two knobs on the top of the dovetail saddle. The laser can then be plugged into the external battery, which we've attached to the top of the telescope with command strips. The lateral transfer hollow retroreflector, or LTHR, attaches with a magnetic mount. Simply turn the key 90 degrees and the LTHR will be held in place. After alignment, the magnetic mount can then be turned off, allowing the LTHR to be removed without disturbing the system. Rough adjustment is accomplished by turning the entire differential adjuster. It can then be locked in place using the black locking color. Then, fine adjustment can be used. For the TX unit, a 532 nanometer 0.9 milliwatt laser was used with a two lens Galilean beam expander to create a minimally sized beam spot for testing distances of 200 to 1000 meters. An ND filter with an optical density of 6 was used when aligning the TX to the RX using the LTHR as do not oversaturate the detector. The LTHR retroreflects the TX beam into the RX and images the beam onto the detector. When the centroid of the beam is within 15.1 pixels of the center of the detector, the alignment process is complete. To verify the alignment accomplished using the LTHR, a range test is used. By hitting a target at a known distance away from the system, the angular deviance of the TX relative to the RX can be quantified by measuring the distance between where the receiver is aiming and where the beam hits the target. For a target placed one kilometer away, in order to meet the 10 arc second error condition, the beam should have a displacement of 47 plus or minus 15 pixels from the center of the detector. The purpose of the software program 
is to process and analyze an image from the detector in order to determine the centroid of the beam. This information is used as feedback to make manual corrections to the alignment system. The software is written in Python and utilizes Anaconda 3 distribution along with OpenCV libraries. The input from the detector is a .fits file. The image array is extracted and processed, first undergoing thresholding in order to remove noise. The threshold image maintains variation of intensity above the threshold limit in order to achieve high accuracy when locating the centroid. The program displays the centroid's position relative to the center and distance from the center. In the large image on the left, we see the threshold image of the filtered and retroreflected beam. Its initial location will vary. Using the detector and video feed, course adjustments can be made to bring the beam towards the center. Then an image is taken and processed by the program. In the top right image, crosshairs mark the center of the image and centroid of the beam. The returned values in the bottom right are used to determine the fine adjustments to, to be made by the alignment system. On the next slide, we have proceeded ahead four iterations to arrive within 15.1 pixel range, indicating alignment to within 10 arc seconds. Unfortunately, we were not able to complete the range test due to issues we had with the ND filter. Due to the nature of the ND filter being glass, it induces angular deviance on the beam path. In order to quantify this deviance, a repeatable mount for the ND filter would be required. Due to delays, we were not able to acquire a mount for the ND filter. If a repeatable mount were available, however, the software could correct for the deviance caused by the ND filter, as it would be the same every time. In order to do this, we would align the beam to the RX using the LTHR and ND filter, remove the LTHR and ND filter, and perform a range test. We would quantify the difference between the beam position predicted by the LTHR alignment and the actual alignment, and we would use this value to estimate the beam path deviance caused by the ND filter. Overall, despite the delays and lack of our second verification test, the system still performed as intended. A parallelism accuracy of less than 10 arc seconds was obtained, and the system was easy to use and quick to align. The system can be further developed in the future through more testing to improve repeatability and further refine the software. Higher power lasers and improved components can also be used to increase the scope of this system's capabilities. Thank you for your time. We hope we have shown you that laser communication technology can be practical, flexible, and easy to integrate on small and large scales.